Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got an Orky Bluetooth speaker here. It's been a while since I've done a Bluetooth speaker. Um, however, this one dropped in via a friend and usual story, USB port is broken. So we're gonna take this guy apart and replace the port. Now, I think this one's gonna be quite straightforward. Um, there was probably a rubber foot on the bottom of this that's been removed already. So we've got a bunch of screws here and I'm assuming if we take those out, this is gonna split apart somehow. I'm hoping I'm not gonna to have to pry open this um, uh, sort of uh, cloth cover. Um, they're very nice, these sort of woven covers. They look very pretty, um, but they're a pain in the ass to get off. Uh, at any rate, let's start by taking out these screws and see how far that gets us. Okay. Ooh. Oh gosh, it's not that easy, is it? It is. Very nice. Cool. So, uh, unlike a lot of them, the um, we don't actually have to go into the enclosure for this. So, let's have a look. We've got power coming in there. Let's disconnect that. 7.4 volts in. So, there's a two-cell LiPo battery in the speaker enclosure. Probably a pair of 18650s, I would imagine. Um, if we take off additional screws here, that looks like that gives us access to open up the uh, enclosure and access those cells. So if you were refurbishing this to put in a new battery, that's probably how I'd go about that. Uh, we don't actually need to go in there though, so I'm not going to. Um, and let's see, there's another Another power wire there. That's just a positive and negative. Not sure what that one is. And then R out. It could be that one of these is charging. Um, and then finally we've got a, a small data line here that is probably ground, ground, ADPO. Hmm and an antenna. It's curious, I'm wondering how the um, how the button interface is working, because there's no real ribbon cable, that's only got four on it. I don't know, I'm not gonna try and reverse engineer this. Uh, however, that now comes off, so all we've gotta do now is just take this board out of this bottom piece and we can just change the uh, USB um, connector on it. Dead easy. Uh, one item of note, the microphone here, that is um, Solastic. So, this white stuff is called Solastic, and it's essentially, it's like glorified glue gun um, goop. And that is holding that in, so that might be a little bit awkward. But if we take this out, we should have enough slack that I don't need to do anything regarding that. Cool, let's take out these screws. Really? <laughs> and in the most rudimentary, yet I don't see why it wouldn't work, method for detecting when you've got an auxiliary cable connected. Hmm. Oh, also, I've just read, oh, of course, that's left out, that's right out. So that's our left speaker, that's our right speaker. That's our power, so those are our controls then. There we go. Well, that solves that. Uh, fine. Okay, right. USB micro port. Uh, let's take this off, then we'll have a look at it and see if we've got a replacement one lined up. Okay, here we go. Hot air, maximum air, 450 degrees. I'm going to be a little bit careful because there's a charge LED there, so I'm going to try not to completely cook that. Oh, oh we're out already. There we go. I've been working on motherboards all day, and those just soak up heat like an anvil. So just suddenly switching out to a double-sided board like this, just suddenly you give it a hard look and stuff drops off of it. You've got to be very careful with heat and mother and boards like this, because 450 degrees, I now realise, was way too hot for this. But again, if you're quick and you're paying attention, it's okay. But yeah, 450 degrees was massive overkill there. You saw how quickly that came out. That's how you break traces. 
Right, I'm now going to clean up the area, so we're going to flow some fresh solder onto here. Then I'm going to try and wick everything clean and clear, uh, including the holes. Um, now, uh, I do have a desoldering gun, and a couple of people have mentioned in recent videos, oh, why didn't you use your desoldering gun? The nozzle on it is clogged, and I'm trying to get hold of a new nozzle. Um, so yeah, uh, it was my fault. I left it turned on overnight, and it's all clogged up, and I need a new nozzle for it. I did order some new ones, but they showed up and they were the wrong size, which I was a bit annoyed about because uh, when I ordered them, I they were specifically labelled as being compatible with this model. But that's uh, it's what happens when you order stuff from China. Sometimes it's just the wrong item. So yeah, either way, that's why I'm going to be using the wick today is because my desoldering gun is blocked. Let's see how we do. So fresh solder in first. The leaded solder will lower the melting point of everything so it's easier to work with it. Now we're going to put a bunch of flux over there and we're going to try and wick everything clear. Come on, there we go. Wicking holes like this is actually quite difficult, I've found. Um, and like, I've got one of them clear, but just sometimes, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know if it's practice or technique or what, but I kind of persist with it because I keep thinking if I keep practicing, I'll get better at it. Ultimately, though, a desoldering gun is a much better solution to this, and I've got to get mine sorted. Gosh, I it. There's so little left in those holes. I think I'll just be able to soldering iron hero that in anyway. Let's go. Right, so the old uh, the old one, so this is a through-hole connector because it's got four legs that go through the board. And it is what I would call an upside-down one where the narrow part is at the bottom of the connector. They can be either way up. So I'm going to have a quick look in my selection to see if I've got one. I might have a winner here. No, absolutely not. Uh, those are SMD. That's SMD. What's that? Uh, that's the wrong way up. Oh, man, look at that. This one's a really close match, but it's the other way up. Uh, fine. In that case, I will crack out my ultimate weapon. Behold, a gift from a viewer. Massive thanks. I've given thanks for this care package that arrived before, but I'll make, mention it again. A kind viewer sent me a big old um, care pack full of all kinds of handy rework stuff. And one of the items in here was this pack of 100 common USB connectors. So um, they're kind of just all in the bag. So <laughs> I'm just going to have a dig through here. That looks promising. Oh, how about you? Oh, I think we've got one. There it is. That's the fella. Lovely. It's incredibly vexing that there are so many of the same hecking connector. Very frustrating. What's the point of a uh, what's the point of a unified connector if everyone makes a different type of that connector? Like, I get the point of having, you know, like an SMD one and a through hole one, but, you know, come on. All right, there's our guy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to heat my soldering iron and just heat through the front two anchor legs uh, so I can get it flat on the board, and then we can just soldering iron everything else. So I should be able to get this from below. Need some tweezers. Just about there though, I think. Now I'll turn it round. 
and we'll get some solder onto the back of those guys. God, that's just about straight. That should be all right, though. Ah, uh, my tip's being rude. There you go, that's what I needed. Now there's actually solder on there. Middle one's not quite right. I'm just going to shove my wedge tip in there. That should sort that out. Watch this bridge everything together. Yeah, that's definitely done it. Whoop. And because I often get people commenting on this, saying, oh, what microscope do you use? I don't. <laughs> uh, this is a Logitech Brio webcam. And uh, Logitech cameras can do crazy macro shots. And that's how I do it. Uh, a microscope is a better tool for this job. But it's just something that I still have not gotten around to um, investing in. Right, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to solder the anchors from underneath. And touch those up on the top again. Lots of solder in the anchor, please. Can never have too much anchorage on a USB port. However, be careful when doing what I'm doing here because one slip and you'll flood the inside of the connector with uh, solder. And once you've got solder in there, it ain't coming back out again. And you've got to pull off the connector and start again. Alcohol. And some judicious toothbrushing. There we go. A little bit blobby as my soldering always is, but that should be perfectly functional. Let's put it in and see if it works. So firstly, let's do a test charge. So one USB cable. All right, there we go. We've got a charge light on the bottom there. So that is now charging away. And then secondly, we'll just make sure it works. We already know it does because it makes noises when we turn it on, maybe. Ah, oh, there it goes. I thought it was going to be one of those. I thought it was going to be one of those really annoying ones that won't turn on if it's on charge. Auxiliary input. There we go. One fixed speaker. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, my support links are in the description down below for Patreon, Discord, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. And also. Big shout out to Synthis, who did the intro music that I use on my channel, and there's a lot of other really cool music. I'll make sure his link is in the description down below as well. I don't use music in my videos very often these days, just because I feel like it's kind of out of vogue. Uh, however, 
I use all of Synthesis music in my early stuff, amongst several other artists as well. So big shout out to those guys as well, and all the other people from the fandom. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye.